NATO's entire security posture in Europe is rapidly evolving. And here in North America, Canada and the U.S. are preparing to upgrade what's known as their continental defense. General Glenn Van Herc is commander of NORAD. He's in Colorado Springs. Hi, General Van Herc. Good to meet you and good to have you on our program this evening. Well, thanks for having me, Vashi. I really appreciate it and the opportunity to talk about NORAD and our mission. And I certainly do want to want to ask you about modernizing NORAD and what that might look like. But I, I actually first wanted to start and just get your assessment of the current security uh, threats this continent faces. And in particular, whether you think what's happened in Ukraine, what Russia has done in Ukraine, has forced or is forcing a rethink of the nature of that threat. Well, certainly I think what has happened uh, in Ukraine has opened some eyes to potential threats to North America and our homelands. Uh, and it's kind of brought it to the forefront and given us a little bit more of a sense of urgency. But I would tell you that, that that's not a recent change. Over the last decade or so, uh, nations have been developing capabilities to hold our homelands at risk, conventional capabilities below the nuclear threshold. threshold uh, in an attempt to delay, disrupt, or potentially destroy our will if we were going to flow forces into a regional crisis or conflict. And so there are numerous capabilities developed on the conventional side, launching from air platforms, land platforms, maritime platforms, uh, submarine undersea platforms, cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles uh, that present very significant challenges to defending North America and our homelands. You named off a number of those uh, capabilities, and, I, and I, I can think, for example, of hypersonic missiles, which has certainly got a lot of, I guess, attention lately, and I think the, the general public, including myself, are, are more familiar with. If you were to kind of characterize those capabilities for our audience and for Canadians watching, what, what would you say about them? Specific to hypersonics, uh, you know, hypersonics can present themselves in multiple forms. And the first form would be a hypersonic de delivered from an ICBM or an intercontinental ballistic missile. Russia actually fielded a hypersonic back in December of 2019 on their Avangard nuclear capable uh, missile that can hold North America at risk. Uh, most recently, I believe we witnessed China last summer through a fractional orbital bombardment vehicle deliver a hypersonic that flew a significant way maneuvered and impacted near a target area. So that's one type of hypersonic that is delivered from a space-based capability. Hypersonics can also be delivered out of submarines in a cruise missile form or off of uh, uh, air platforms as well, uh, hypersonic cruise missiles. So there are various types. I wanna be clear, I'm tasked to defend in my NORAD hat against hypersonic cruise missiles. I'm not tasked to defend against hypersonic missiles that emanate from space, such as what we saw delivered from China. That we rely on our nuclear deterrent for. So then if we are focusing in on Russia, for example, how would you describe as succinctly as possible, or if you were to explain the threat from your vantage point, Russia itself poses to North America, what would you say? Well, at this time, what I would say is we're not seeing any direct threat to North America or our homelands. Certainly we are prepared. That's my job to continue to be prepared if we do see those threats. I would say the most likely threat and the one that would present itself first would be a non-kinetic threat, such as a cyber attack on our homeland. Uh, I don't see any intent out of Russia right now uh, to attack our homeland with kinetic capabilities uh, either conventional or nuclear. Certainly we keep an eye on that and we're prepared to respond uh, if that uh, situation presented itself. When you talk about being prepared to respond, Canada most recently made an announcement uh, of funding about five, approximately $5 billion over a number of years that will go towards modernizing the efforts to prepare for something like that or, or something of that scale and, and that scope, in, a, in essence to modernize NORAD. I'm sure you've listened to that announcement. You know the details of it. Is it in line with your expectations of what it would take to, to modernize NORAD? Absolutely, Masha. That's a great step. And I applaud the government of Canada, uh, Minister Anon, for her efforts to lead uh, through with the uh, additional funding for NORAD modernization. Uh, my input into that was through a, uh, 
a priority list, which uh, Canada accepted and made their political decisions, if you will, on what to fund. But I'm really encouraged. They're going to get after some domestic or uh, domain awareness challenges that I have, uh, infrastructure capability, uh, communication command and control capabilities, additional tanker capacity. All those things are uh, needed at this time for NORAD and NORAD modernization. And do you anticipate a, a parallel announcement of some sort from the United States? And, and if so, when? Is it odd at all that it didn't happen more in conjunction with the Canadian one? What, what I would say is uh, the United States didn't put out a specific budget for specific NORAD modernization. The president's budget, which was uh, announced a couple months ago, actually has four over the horizon radars, if appropriated by our Congress, that will give me significant domain awareness capabilities. In addition to that, there's uh, command and control capabilities uh, that are in the U.S. budget. So it's not a specific separate line item for NORAD modernization, but more broadly, it's a, uh, a, a whole of budget that gets after that to include maritime awareness and domain awareness uh, by the United States Navy. So, so in layman's terms, just making sure I understand that, it, it, basically the money is allotted. It just has to be kind of assigned by Congress. And so you aren't expecting kind of an announcement like the one the government here made, which is here's money, here's, here's where it's coming from, here's what it's going to. It's already assigned in the budget. It just needs to be kind of approved by Congress. Is that accurate? Uh, not, not exactly. So it is in the budget from a authorization. So our first set of congressional uh, process has the Congress authorize it. Then there's a separate process where we have appropriators who actually apply specific funds to the authorized capabilities in the president's budget. Okay. And in the absence of, I guess, the announcement from Canada, in the absence of that money actually flowing from the United States, can you, I guess, in, in, in as much layman's terms as possible, describe for Canadians watching tonight what the cost of not modernizing NORAD is, in your opinion? Well, the cost of not modernizing NORAD, in my opinion, is decision space for Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, President Biden, and our other senior leaders. Uh, that's exactly what uh, companies or countries such as Russia and China are trying to do, is take away our decision space, slow down any force flow that we would go uh, force uh, into a a regional crisis or conflict. And so I think when you take away that decision space, what we do is increase the risk of potential strategic deterrence failure. And so having domain awareness, the ability to create time for our senior leaders to create deterrence options that ensure we're able to have negotiations with uh, potential uh, adversaries, or for me as an operational commander, to actually posture forces for a deterrent effect. That's what we're really talking about. And bottom line, based on what you've heard from both governments so far and what has been um, announced, it, it, are the plans that are underway, will, will they meet that bar? Will they enable NORAD, if they, if they are followed through on, will they enable NORAD to counter the threat as you describe it? I'm confident that the plans, if funded and implemented, give us significant capability to deter every day if required, de-escalate in crisis and put us in a position if required to defeat in conflict. So it's really encouraging what Canada's done, and I'm encouraging where the U.S. is encouraged where the U.S. is going as well. All right, General Van Herc, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.